Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. We can forward our discussion on conservation and in this lecture we'll have a look at unsustainable development. Now let us begin this lecture by remembering what Gandhi had said. The world has enough for everyone's needs but not everyone's greed. So here Gandhi is emphasizing that we have enough resources but these resources are only sufficient to meet the needs of everybody but not the greed of people. That is, he is emphasizing that the resources that we have are limited and while they can be used to fulfill everybody's needs so that everybody is well off, they cannot be used to fulfill the greeds of people. So if somebody wants to have more and more of all the resources, then that is not something that can be permitted because that becomes unsustainable. So here we are getting an idea of sustainability. If you use resources in such a manner that you are using them to fulfill your needs, it is a sustainable use. But if you are using things to fulfill your greed, then it is probably an unsustainable use. Now, technically we define sustainable development as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. So when we talk about sustainable development, we are saying that we need to have a development and this development should be sufficient to meet the needs of the present. Again, it's the same thing, everyone's needs. So we want to have a development such that we are able to meet the needs of everybody, but without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Now, why do we not want to compromise the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs? Because again, that if we are compromising the ability of our future generations, then probably we have shifted from the domain of needs to the domain of greed. And we are using so much of the resources that our children and our grandchildren will no longer be able to meet their own needs. So then we'll call it an unsustainable development. So sustainable development is the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. And we have seen before that if the world goes with an unsustainable development, then we have issues. We have problems of conservation. Some examples of what an unsustainable development can lead to are overconsumption. So overuse of resources, again, overuse of resources because we have shifted towards meeting the greeds of some people or greeds of majority of people. So that leads to an overconsumption. So if you have an overconsumption, you will be clearing off, uh, off a large portion of the forest to make space for agriculture, to get more and more amount of wood. If you go for an overconsumption, you will deplete the resources, you will deplete the fish stocks you will deplete the environment, you will deplete the groundwater. So that is a result of unsustainable development, overconsumption, destruction of habitats, which is bringing huge survival uh, questions for a majority of species. Desertification, because the ground cover is completely removed because of uh, the need for wood, the need for water, and also because of overgrazing. So that leads to desertification. Ocean acidification, because we are using so much amount of fossil fuels that we have increased the amount of carbon dioxide that is there in the atmosphere. And some of this carbon dioxide is now getting into our ocean waters. It is making the waters acidic. So that is another consequence of an unsustainable development. Depletion of the ozone layer, changes in the biogeochemical cycles. So we have shifted to an unnatural biogeochemical cycle. 
loss of biodiversity, extinction of species, changes in the distribution of organisms, changes in biodiversity, changes in climate, erosion of soil, changes in geomorphology, all of these are some consequences of unsustainable development. Changes in stratigraphy, changes in the element composition, changes in soil, introduction of invasive species, pollution, leaching of corals, wars. So a number of these things are arising because of the greed of human beings. If everybody was targeting to fulfill their own needs, then such issues would not have arisen. Wars arise because of needs of two nations. So these are some consequences of the unsustainable development. Now, when we talk about the concept of sustainability, when we say that sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs, then we are talking about two primary concepts here. The first one is that the needs of the present. So what we are trying to say here is that there is a difference between needs and greed. So the first concept is the concept of needs, in particular, the essential needs of the world's poor to which overriding priority needs to be given. So when we talk about sustainable development, we are not saying that we should refrain from development and we should uh, put uh, the world's poor in a position where they no longer have control over their own lives. No, that is not sustainable development. Sustainable development says that needs of everybody and especially the needs of the poor people needs to be met. So all the human needs, all the human requirements have to, to be met. The second concept is the idea of limitations or the idea of having a trade-off. So this definition is emphasizing that there is always a trade-off. We can go on meeting the needs, but if we increase our needs to such an extent that, this, that the meeting of those needs has started to affect the ability of the future generations, then probably that is not right. So there is always a trade-off. You have to decide how much do you need today and how much needs to be left for the future generations. So there is always this trade-off that goes on. There is always this idea of limitations which is imposed by the current state of technology and social organization on the environment's ability to meet the present and the future needs. So the ability of the environment to meet the needs of the present as well as of the future generations is limited. And so this has to be kept in mind whenever we are trying to meet the needs of the present generation or whenever we are trying to uh, leave resources for the future generations. We recognize three pillars of sustainability. We, talk, we can talk about environmental sustainability, economic sustainability, and social sustainability. So these are the three pillars of sustainability, environmental, economic, and social sustainability. So what are these? When we talk about environmental sustainability, we talk about things such as ecosystem services. Now, ecosystem services are the services that are provided to human beings by a well-functioning ecosystem. So, these are things such as reduction of pollution, provisioning of services such as woods, things such as wood, fodder, fuel. Then, we also have things like maintenance and regulation of the local climate and the microclimate, the benefits of biodiversity, including things such as pollination, or protection from certain diseases, availability of medicinal plants. Now, these are all different ecosystem services which are provided by an ecosystem that is functioning well. And when we talk about environmental sustainability, we need to ensure that the ecosystem services are provided to the present generation and also to the future generations, which means that the, the ecosystems should be in a position where they are able to work properly. So that is a, a part of environmental sustainability. Then we talk about things such as green engineering and chemistry. How can you manufacture goods or services in a manner that it is less polluting to the environment? So for instance, could you 
say replace a few chemicals that are inside a bottle uh, inside a plastic bottle in such a way that when these chemicals leach out into the environment then they cause lesser degree of harm so when we start thinking about these things then we are talking about green chemistry can we replace plastics with biodegradable materials bioplastics so this is also another concept in green engineering in environmental sustainability we also talk about the quality of air and water especially the levels of pollution that are there we talk about reducing the effects of stressors such as pollution greenhouse gas emissions and so on so if you want to maintain the sustainability of the environment you need to keep these stresses down to a certain level we talk about resource integrity by minimizing waste generation to prevent accidental release in the future so when we talk about environmental sustainability there are two options one to go with the uh, the business as usual where you are generating a huge amount of waste and you are probably keeping this waste in a landfill or keeping them in a, in containers you are storing uh, say uh, chemical waste or radioactive waste in containers so and whenever you have such a situation then it is possible that the future generations are going to pay for our misdeeds because it is possible that in a near or a far off future some of these chemicals may start to leach out now in that case we are putting a liability to the future generations so when we talk about environmental sustainability we say that no we should go for such processes that the amount of waste generation is minimized so that there is a lesser need to keep these waste in a storage which could cause an accidental release or issues for the future generation so we want to have the resources today but we want to have them in such a manner that the that we are not creating a liability for the future generations so that is a part of environmental sustainability then when we talk about social sustainability we talk about things such as environmental justice empowerment of communities that are burdened by pollution so in, so, in social sustainability we have things such as the rights of the local communities so suppose there is a big mining firm and it says that okay i need these forests because uh, below these forests we have a huge amount of minerals we have a a, a huge stock of ores now do you just permit this company to go cut the forest and start digging out the ores or do you also ask the local communities now there could be certain communities who have been protecting these forests because these forests are part of their culture so do they have a right or not and if we say that these people also have a right then we are talking about social sustainability similarly in one of the later lectures we'll have a look at things such as industrial pollution now if there is a company that is releasing chemical waste into the seas and the fishermen uh, who are catching the, the the fish that are laced with the, with these poisonous chemicals they are losing out their jobs the local community that is feeding on these fishes is falling ill so do these people also have a right and when we say that they also have a right to life we are talking about things such as social sustainability we all in social sustainability we talk about protection sustenance and improvement of human health because again when we talk about the the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs then if the future generation is healthy then they will be in a much better position to meet their own needs and so we need to ensure that we are not spreading pollution or industrial effluents to such an extent that it is impacting the health of any community so this is a component of social sustainability or things such as increasing the participation of stakeholders now here again the future generation will be in a much better position to fulfill their needs if they have been involved in the decision making process if they have been trained in the decision making process if they know how to say bargain for things if they know how to negotiate for things so when we talk about social sustainability it is important to ensure that all the stakeholders 
get a right they have and they get a voice whenever you need to make any decision whether any industry should be set up where should it be set up what will be the modalities of uh, collection of the effluents or treatment of the effluents then the local people have to be involved and when we talk about such stakeholder rights we are talking about social sustainability education about sustainability will the future generations will be in a much lesser position to meet their needs if they are uneducated so in social sustainability we also say that people need to be educated about sustainability sustainability is something that should be incorporated in the textbooks sustainability is something that should be taught in the schools because when people are educated about sustainability they will be in a much better position to assert their rights and will have a much better control over their lives another thing that we talk about is the protection maintenance and access to resources protection of resources maintenance of resources and access to the resources now let us take the example of a tiger reserve now currently there are certain communities that are living alongside a tiger reserve and their livelihoods are dependent on the tiger reserve because there are people who want to see tigers they come to the to these tiger reserves and tourism industry is providing jobs to these local communities now what will happen if all the tigers get poached out if there are no tigers in a tiger reserve there would be hardly any tourists who would want to visit this place so maintain so the protection and maintenance of tigers now here tigers are a resource they are a natural resource and maintenance and protection of these tigers is critical to ensure that the future generations are also able to derive their livelihoods or employment through this resource similarly people need to have an access to the resources now suppose the government comes up with a policy and says that okay there is this tiger reserve but all the uh, the facilities of tourism will be say uh, set up and maintained by a third party and we are not allowing the locals to have an access to this area or to the resources in that case the ability of the future generations of these communities to derive their livelihoods and employment from these tigers or these tiger reserves will go down so in social sustainability we need to ensure that the resources are protected the resources are maintained in a good fashion and people also have access to these resources we talk about promotion of sustainable living that is also a component of social sustainability because if people shift to living in a sustainable manner then the next generations are in a much better position to uh, meet their own needs so this is also another component of the social sustainability then we talk about economic sustainability now in economic sustainability we talk about job security so if there is a resource does it provide job security to people or say again we are talking about a tiger reserve is the condition such that people have a job one day and next day they can be kicked down if that is the situation if the local people do not have a job security then probably this is not a sustainable development because the uh, the locals or the people who are dependent on these tiger reserves also need to be sure that they are they, that they will be in a position to utilize these resources to meet their needs so in economic sustainability we talk about job security we talk about incentivization of sustainable practices now we have seen before that incentives are things that induce people to act in a certain manner now if you if the society wants to promote sustainable living then sustainable living needs to be incentivized a good op, uh, a, uh, a good way out is through the provisioning of taxes and subsidies so if somebody is going towards an unsustainable living then probably the government may tax that person more and which is why the government taxes polluting vehicles in a big way so by these taxations the government is incentivizing people to refrain from using these oil gas thing vehicles and pollution screening vehicles 
In a number of cases, these incentives are also positive incentives, such as subsidies. So, in a number of cases, the government subsidizes the purchase of electric vehicles. The government gives you a, a subsidy if you put up solar panels on top of your roof. So, economic sustainability talks about the use of incentives to promote sustainability. Then it talks also about the market practices for sustainability. How do you tinker the market in such a manner that sustainability gets promoted? We will look at the functioning of markets in uh, the later lectures, but here it is important to emphasize that the demand for things depends on a number of factors, including whether people have been exposed to it and how culturally or socially acceptable is using of a certain resource. Now, if through education or through awareness, uh, people get this idea that the use of solar panels is better or the use of, uh, uh, the, of SUVs is bad for the environment. So that would impact the demand of these resources. And demand would also have an impact on the supply of these resources, on the prices of these resources. So economic sustainability also talks about the market practices for sustainability. It talks about natural resource accounting. When we do an accounting for any industry, is it only the profit and loss statements that we are interested in? Or are we also interested in, in accounting for how sustainable was the manufacturing process? So natural resource accounting incorporates uh, things such as uh, the sustainability accounting for industries. It also incorporates the accounting for how much amount of resources do you have. Does the country say, for instance, uh, perform an audit every few, every few years about how much is the stock of forest that is available to the country? How much is the amount of groundwater that we have in the country? How much is the level of fish stocks in the country? Now, when we incorporate accounting for all of these different natural resources, we are talking about economic sustainability. Life cycle cost assessment. So a very good example in the case of life cycle cost assessment is plastics. Plastics are so ubiquitous because they are cheap to manufacture. So it is very easy and it is very cheap to say manufacture a plastic bag or a plastic bottle. But when, once they have been used and once they have been thrown out, then if, uh, then it is difficult to collect them, especially because they are light in weight and they litter easily. It is difficult to, uh, to carry them to, uh, uh, to say, a sorting facility because, again, because of their light weight, they, uh, they use a very large volume and so transportation becomes difficult. It is difficult to sort them out into different categories because there are so many different kinds of plastics, there are so many different kinds of additives that we are adding to plastics, there are so many different kinds of plasticizers that are there. We have thermoplastics, we have thermosetting plastics. Both of these cannot be mixed together if your aim is to recycle plastics. Then, when if these plastics are recycled, then there is a cost to recycling. If these plastics are put into a landfill, then there is a cost of land involved. Now, the person who is manufacturing the plastic or the industrialist who is manufacturing these plastics or these plastic bags is not paying for all of these. It is the society that is paying for these. So, the municipal corporation of your city will be paying for, uh, say, a collection of garbage or processing of garbage or disposal of garbage. So when we say that the municipal corporation is paying, it is the taxpayers who are paying. It is you and me who are paying for uh, the disposal of these plastics. It's not the industrialists. So if we emphasize that plastics are cheap because it, they are cheap to manufacture, then it would be one story. And if we emphasize that throughout their life cycle, from their cradle to their grave, the plastics have such and such costs involved, the cost of collection, the cost of transportation, the cost of processing, and the cost of keeping them stored for say thousands of years because they just do not degrade. 
So when we incorporate all of these costs into the accounting, we are talking about the life cycle assessment of plastics. And once we incorporate life cycle assessment, we will see that a number of biodegradable products are much cheaper than plastics. It is only because we, we do not consider the life cycle assessment that we say that plastics are cheap. If we incorporate life cycle assessment, we will realize how expensive they are. Now, incorporation of life cycle assessment is important for conservation, but it needs to be done. And when we talk about life cycle assessments, we are talking about economic sustainability. Then in economic sustainability, we, call, we talk about cost structures to reduce the risk and to promote new technologies. So for instance, if there is an, an industry which is a polluting industry and this industry has an option to say install an equipment that would process these pollutants. But the installation of these equipment will entail certain costs. There could also be uh, a requirement for putting money into research for development of such technologies which will be able to, uh, to control this pollution. Now, these sorts of things need to be incentivized. So you need to incentivize industries to install such equipment. You need to incentivize the research institutions to to perform research into developing these technologies and when we say that all of these are important and they need to be funded say by the government we are talking about economic sustainability and when we incorporate all these three the social accounting environmental accounting and the financial accounting then we are talking about the triple bottom line now bottom line generally refers to the last line in the profit and losses statement and it tells what is the level of profit or loss that a company has had in a particular year. So that is the bottom line. But then the triple bottom line says that not just the profit and loss, but we also need to see if uh, the social accounting and environmental accounting have also been a part of uh, the functioning of this industry or the company. Now, when we talk about sustainability, there are two different uh, schools of thought. There is one school of thought that says that, okay, we need to have sustainable development, but we can say do a trade over or a trade off for meeting the needs of the present in a much greater way than meeting the needs of the future generations. So that is weak sustainability. And there is another school of thought that says that no matter what happens, the development has to be sustainable. You cannot trade uh, the needs of the future generations with the needs of the present generation. And that is the strong sustainability. So weak sustainability assumes that natural capital and manufactured capital are essentially substitutable. So natural capital such as forests and the manufactured capital such as, say, iron ore. So weak sustainability says that both of these are essentially substitutable, which means that if you are uh, destroying your forest, but by destroying the forest, you are having more and more industries, or you are having more and more roads, or you are having more and more production of iron, then it is okay if the forest gets destroyed that is weak sustainability. It assumes that natural capital and manufactured capital are essentially substitutable. And it considers that there are no essential differences between the kinds of well-being that they generate. So they are one and the same. The only thing that matters is the total value of the aggregate stock of capital, which includes the natural capital and the manufactured capital which should be at least maintained or ideally increased for the sake of the future generations. So it says that if we uh, if we get rid of our forest, but we have developed an industry in its place, so through this industry, the future generation will be able to meet its own needs. So there is no need to conserve the forest. So that is weak sustainability, that natural capital and manufactured capital are essentially substitutable. 
In such a perspective, it does not matter whether the current generation uses up non-renewable resources or dumps carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as long as enough machines, roads and ports are built in compensation. So this is good sustainability. The strong sustainability school assumes that natural capital and manufactured capital are essentially non-substitutable. So it says that you need to maintain natural capital and you also need to maintain the manufactured capital and you need to maintain both of these. You cannot just say that we will be, be maintaining the manufactured capital at the cost of the natural capital. So that is the strong sustainability. It considers that there are essential differences between the kinds of building that they generate. So essentially you cannot substitute the joy of seeing a tiger by say providing uh, a longer road. So this is what the strong sustainability argument says that the benefits that you receive out of the natural capital are very different from the benefit that you receive out of the manufactured capital. And so when we talk about sustainability, we need to maintain both of these capitals separately. Both natural capital and manufactured capital need to be at least maintained or ideally increased for the sake of the future generation. So it says that the natural capital and the manufactured capital both need to be maintained. And both need to be ideally increased for the sake of the future generations. That is, if you look at the differences between strong and weak sustainability, the key idea in strong sustainability is that the substitutability of natural capital by other types of capital is severely limited. They are not substitutable. The weak sustainability, on the other hand, says that natural capital and other types of capital, such, uh, such as manufactured capital, are perfectly substitutable and you can trade off one for the other. Strong sustainability says that certain human actions can entail irreversible consequences. A good example is climate change. So it says that if you go on releasing uh, large amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, that would lead to global warming because of the greenhouse effect and that would lead to climate change. Now climate change essentially is an irreversible uh, phenomenon and so it will lead to consequences that are also irreversible. Weak sustainability says that technological innovation and monetary compensation can be done for environmental degradation. That is, on the one hand, the strong sustainability argument would say that you should not uh, release so much amounts of carbon dioxide because uh, that will uh, lead to climate changes and that would lead to um, negative consequences for a large number of people. On the other hand, weak sustainability says that okay, even if there is climate change, we can provide monetary compensation to the people who are affected by climate change. So weak sustainability would say that okay, it is fine that there is climate change, we can always compensate people for it, we can provide them with money and they should be happy with it. And so there is no need for the present generation to say stop climate change. So this is a major difference between uh, the strong and the weak sustainability. The strong sustainability says that conserving the irreplaceable stocks of critical natural capital for the sake of future generation is essential. Because a number of stocks of natural capital are irreplaceable. You cannot replace them with anything else. The weak sustainability says that the total value of the aggregate stock of capital should be maintained or ideally increased, not natural capital. So this is a difference between strong and weak sustainability. The key concept in strong sustainability is critical natural capital. So it tries to emphasize again and again that the natural capital is critical. On the other hand, the weak sustainability just says that optimal allocation of scarce resources is good enough. The strong sustainability says that scientific knowledge is required as an input for public deliberation. So it talks about procedural rationality. So it says that scientific knowledge is crucial and we need to develop these procedures. 
on the other hand the weak sustainability only talks about technical or scientific approach for determining the thresholds and norms so it's talking about instrumental rationality so on the one hand the strong sustainability is asking how are we going to conserve these natural capital but weak sustainability is only saying that okay even if the national capital is going down we just need a method to measure this loss of national capital so that we are able to compensate for it by providing money so it only talks about a technical aspect it only talks about an instrumental rationality not a procedural rationality now sustainability these days has come into our uh, common currency especially after the earth summit of 1992 in the earth summit the countries came together and they agreed to agenda 21 which is the sustainable development in the 21st century now this talks about sustainable development goals now these include things such as no poverty reduction of poverty so here we are talking about a social sustainability as well as an economic sustainability it talks about removing hunger because if you if you create conditions where people are no longer poor or hungry then probably they as well as their next generations will be in a much better position to uh, fulfill their own needs and requirements it talks about things such as good health and well being which is crucial not just for the current generation but also for the future generation it talks about quality education to people it talks about gender equality clean water and sanitation affordable and clean energy not just affordable energy not just clean energy the energy needs to be affordable so that more and more people have access to the energy but then in the uh, quest for making energy affordable we just cannot go with the non renewable sources of energy so we have to shift towards a clean energy and we need to to create such such conditions that clean energy also becomes affordable so we need to invest into research into clean energy we need to invest into those industries that are producing say uh, the solar panels we need to provide incentives to people we need to provide subsidies so that clean energy becomes affordable so affordable and clean energy is a sustainable goal decent work and economic growth now we are starting to talk about the economic sustainability everybody should have an opportunity for a decent work and should also have the opportunities of economic growth industry innovation and infrastructure so you need to have infrastructures you need to have industries which will make it possible for the future generations to meet their own needs reduce inequalities sustainable cities and communities so not just sustainability at the level of the industries but also sustainability at the level of cities so is your city in a position where it is doing rain water harvesting is your city for instance having a sewage treatment plant and even more preferably a sewage treatment plant that makes use of bio remediation because that is one of the most sustainable ways in which we can process the waste the sustainable development goals talk about sustainable cities and communities they talk about responsible consumption and production consumption needs to be responsible which means that over consumption needs to be avoided so this is responsible consumption but also responsible production responsible production is production in a manner that we are not overusing the natural resources we are not generating a huge amount of waste we are doing a production in one of in some of the most efficient manners we are doing a production that is using clean energy so that is a responsible production so the sustainable development goals talk about responsible consumption and responsible production they talk about climate action what are we doing to mitigate the climate change it talks about life below water so it talks about whether or not our habitats uh, our um, aquatic habitats are they functioning well what about the fish stocks are we over consuming the fish stocks so that also needs to be 
kept in mind. So that is also one of the sustainable development tools. It talks about life on land, which includes biodiversity. So are we doing our development in a manner that conserves biodiversity or are we doing our development in a way that is uh, getting rid of biodiversity? It talks about peace, justice and strong institutions. Because once we have peace, once we have justice and once we have strong institutions, then it creates a society in which people have much more control over their own lives. It creates a society where everybody is able to develop himself or herself. And it creates a society in which not just the present generation, but also the future generations will be in a much better position to say do innovation or to have more control over their own lives. So the sustainable development goals talk about maintaining peace. If there is a war, then probably the next generation will be in a much worse position to maintain their own needs. It talks about justice, it talks about strong institutions, and it also talks about partnerships for the rules. Because of late we have realized that sustainability cannot be done at the level of just a single country. So if, for instance, there is one country that is releasing a huge quantity of uh, greenhouse gases, it is overusing coal, and then the consequences will not just be faced by that country, but also by the world in total. Because climate change is a global phenomenon. If there is a, a country that is burning a huge quantity of coal, then the acid rain that results will not just fall in that country, but will also fall in the neighboring countries. If there is a radioactive uh, release from one country, then this radioactive uh, elements will move through wind and water to reach other countries. They will affect uh, people in the other countries as well. So we require strong partnerships and we require common goals. So these are the sustainable development goals. So can you relate these to the 10 principles of economics? Well, one, people and society face trade-offs. And when we talk about sustainability, we are talking about the trade-off between meeting the needs of the present generation and meeting the needs of the future generations. So sustainability says that we need to meet the needs of the present generation in such a manner that the future generations are also able to meet their own needs. So this is a trade-off. Trade-offs, of, of course, lead to cost, what you give up to get something. So if you want to do development in such a manner, that your children and your grandchildren are also able to have control over their own lives, then you will have to forego something. Cost, as we have seen, is what you give up to get something. And if you want to, to perform development in a manner that your future generation is secure, then probably you will have to reduce your own consumption. So trade-offs lead to cost and sustainable development talks about these costs. Then also that people respond to incentives. So if you want to promote sustainable development, you will have to incentivize sustainable development. And you will also have to disincentivize development that is not sustainable. And we have seen that taxes and subsidies are very good mechanisms, but also uh, we also have uh, social incentives. So is the society boycotting an industrialist who is polluting the the surrounding is the society honoring an industrialist who is uh, um, say making an express effort to reduce pollution when you go and buy an equipment do you only look at the cost or do you also see whether or not that industry is making the equipment in a sustainable manner do you also look at the energy audits of the of the industry do you also look at the natural resource audit of the industry if you do all of these, then probably you are incentivizing sustainable development and disincentivizing unsustainable development. So people respond to incentives, industries respond to incentives, and it is not just the role of government, but also of each and every consumer. Then we saw that markets are usually a good way to organize economic activity. And so if we want to promote sustainable development, we will also have to act at the level of the market. And markets can be influenced. 
Markets can be influenced by influencing the buyers and markets can be influenced by influencing the sellers. Then governments can sometimes improve the market outcomes through interventions and these interventions can be at the level of taxation, subsidies or direct command and control. So we can make use of different principles of economics to ensure that we have a sustainable development. So what kinds of things should we be promoting? and what sorts of things are being promoted. So one thing that is being promoted for sustainable development is clean technology. Clean technology refers to any process, product or service that reduces negative environmental impacts through significant energy efficiency improvements, sustainable use of resources or environmental protection activities. So clean technology is any process, product or service. So we can have it at the level of a process, we can have it at the level of product or we can have a clean technology even in the service industry. And what does clean technology do? It reduces negative Im environmental impacts. And how does it reduce the negative environmental impacts? By doing significant energy efficiency. So we are talking about such processes or such products or such services that keep in mind that the energy efficiency needs to be increased. Now the best thing about increasing energy efficiency is that it also makes the, uh, the industry or the process more profitable. So for instance, there are two methods of manufacturing a chemical and the first one takes say one megajoule of energy and the second one takes 10 megajoules of energy for the same quantity of product. Now, if the industry shifts towards the process that is taking just one megajoule of energy, then probably the industry will also be doing significant cost cuttings because of reduction in its energy usage. So the bill for energy will go down. Now, it is important that we incentivize such processes because in the beginning, it might be difficult for the industry to shift to a more energy efficiency uh, process or protocol because it might require say installation of a different equipment. But in the case of clean technology, we try to increase the energy efficiency or it promotes the sustainable use of resources or it promotes environmental protection activities. So for instance, if there is uh, a product or let us say that there are two packets of tea and one says that it has been sourced from those areas that are doing organic cultivation and the second one does not do that. So in that case, if you uh, say uh, purchase the one that is uh, that has been sourced from organic farms, then you are promoting uh, sustainability. Or there could be say a chocolate that says that it has been uh, taken from those farms or those countries that do not permit child labor. Or if you purchase say a, a, a mobile phone that says that when it was manufactured, we took care that the greenhouse emissions were net zero. Now, if we are using these services or if you are using these processes or these products, what we are doing is that we are promoting clean technology, which will lead to uh, sustainability. Now themes in clean technology include renewable energy, water purification, air purification, sewage treatment, environmental remediation, solid waste management, energy conservation and appropriate sustainable technologies. Now let us have a look at some clean technologies that have been incentivized. One is environmental friendly energy and energy storage, including things such as power generation with renewable energy, use of photovoltaics or the solar panels, use of solar thermals. Now, solar thermals are those power plants that make use of the heat that is given out by the sun in the form of infrared radiation. So it, um, it concentrates that heat and it uses that heat to run a turbine. So it is different from a 
नॉर्मल सोलर सिस्टम और एनर्जी जनरेशन यूजिंग जियोथर्मल एनर्जी व्हिच इज द हीट दैट इज स्टोर्ड इनसाइड द अर्थ और पावर जनरेशन यूजिंग विंड एनर्जी और पावर जनरेशन यूजिंग बायो एनर्जी और पावर जनरेशन यूजिंग सीवेज गैस another clean technology is the environmental friendly use of fossil fuels so in this case you are using the fossil fuels but you are using them in a way that is more environmental friendly now remember that when we talk about clean technologies we are only talking about increasing the energy efficiency or shifting from a 100% uh, fossil fuel to a less amount of fossil fuel it it is not necessary that it should be a, a 100% shift because clean technologies are to promote it so it is an incremental step it is a gradual process so in the case of environmental friendly use of fossil fuels we are still using fossil fuels and it is important to remember that fossil fuels are non renewable energy resources they are limited and so they need to be avoided but then in cases where they cannot be avoided we can at least shift to an environmentally friendly use such as a combined cycle power plant so in a combined cycle power plant we use several heat engines together to increase the efficiency so in this power plant we are still using the fossil fuel but by using a number of heat engines we are increasing the efficiency another is cogeneration plants where we have a simultaneous generation of electricity and useful heat now this heat could be used to say heat up the buildings so cogeneration plants ensure that the heat that was released in the generation of electricity that is also tapped and that is also used so that the heating cost somewhere else can go down or shift to high performance power station or carbon dioxide reduced power generation so you can shift to a process that is still using fossil fuels but say you uh, releases less amount of carbon dioxide or we can shift to storage technologies such as mechanical storage of energy electrochemical storage of energy electrical storage of energy thermal storage of energy so storage technologies are clean technologies because they permit people to to generate more and more amount of energy through renewable means when they are available store that energy and use them when the renewable energy is not available a good example is the solar cells the solar cells or solar panels will only work during the day time when the sun is there what about the night time so if you wanted to shift to solar panels then you would have to devise a mechanism through which the energy or the electricity that is generated during the day time can be stored now this storage can be through means of a mechanical storage for instance you can uh, use the solar energy in the day time to run pumps and shift water to a higher level and in the night time this water can be made to run through turbines and get the energy back so in this way we will be able to store the electricity that was generated through sustainable means or through renewable energy or we can go with electrochemical storage which is batteries or uh, we can go through electrical storage or thermal storage another clean technology is efficient grids such as smart grid local grid uh, local and district heat grid so when electricity is moved from one place to another there is a huge loss that occurs because this electricity is uh, is converted into heat energy and through a smart grid we can uh, reduce the amount of energy losses during transport of electricity another clean technology is in the circular economy section such as waste collection and transportation so if you develop an infrastructure for uh, for increasing waste collection and transportation you are working in clean technology if you devise a method of waste separation and sorting so that the plastics can be recycled then we are talking about a clean technology or utilization of waste through say recycling so if you devise a method uh, through which plastics can be recycled into other products then we are talking about clean technology or thermal waste treatment 
Then we have waste disposal, safeguarding and removal of contaminants and hazardous waste. That is also a clean technology. Reduction or utilization of landfill gas. Now, when we talk about a landfill, the organic material that is put into the landfill is slowly converted into methane and is released. Now, methane is a very potent greenhouse gas. So, it acts in a way that is very similar to carbon dioxide but is much more effective than carbon dioxide in trapping the sun's heat. Now, if this gas can be reduced or it can be utilized in some way because methane can always be burnt. So, if you devise a technology through which these landfill gases can be burnt to generate electricity, we are talking about clean technologies. Or environmental remediation. No, remediation is uh, bringing the environment back to the normal pristine state, such as land rehabilitation or ecological re restoration. So, if we, for instance, de devise a technology through which the holes that are left on the ground after a mining operation, they can be filled back again or they can be replanted. Then we are talking about a clean technology. Or sustainable water management, such as water procurement and treatment, including groundwater monitoring and water purification. So, if you devise a technology that can monitor the amounts of groundwater that you have, that is a clean technology because that permits us to use water in a more sustainable manner. If you devise a technology that can purify water, especially the sea water, then we are talking about sustainable water management because we will reduce our dependence on groundwater, which is a very crucial natural resource. If we say tap out most of the groundwater, then it takes hundreds of years for the reservoirs to fill back again. And if we do, if we uh, did tap all the groundwater resources, then probably we are leaving out less for the future generations. But if you devise a technology through which uh, seawater can be purified and used, so in that case we will reduce our dependence on groundwater, and that will be a sustainable usage of groundwater. Or things about water utilization. That is, if we could have ways uh, of increasing the efficiency of the components of the water distribution system, reducing the losses there, working on a, on a better water distribution grid. So these are all different clean technologies or energy or increasing the efficiency in water utilization. Can we talk about water efficient technologies in the residential sector? Can we talk about, say, uh, systems that use less amount of water can we talk about water efficient technologies in the commercial sector or we have clean technologies in the sustainable in the sustainable mobility sector such as alternative fuels biofuels natural gas hybrid drives electric drives fuel cell drives now many of these reduce our dependence on petroleum or alternative drive technologies, efficient combustion engines, environmentally friendly vehicle design, or infrastructure and traffic control. So, if you have an inefficient traffic control, then probably a lot more people are spending their time in the uh, uh, in the intersections with the traffic lights, and that is also leading to um, uh, the usage of fossil fuels that could be avoided through an efficient traffic control, an intelligent traffic control, integrated traffic infrastructure, electricity, charging stations, natural gas fueling stations. If we are promoting these, we are promoting clean technologies or sustainable mobility management, such as car sharing. If you develop an app that, that can uh, promote people to go for a car sharing arrangement or a car pooling arrangement, we are talking about a clean technology or vehicle fleet management. Similarly, we also have clean technologies in resource and material efficiency. Cross-sectional technologies such as biotechnology, nanotechnology, mechanical engineering and process technology, new materials such as compound materials and bioplastics. Now, compound materials in a number of cases are able to increase energy efficiency by reducing the weight of the equipment. Biomaterials such as bioplastics are very good alternatives to petroleum based plastics. They are biodegradable. Or we can talk about material efficient 
processes such as optimization of existing processes or utilization of new materials or reduction of the operating supplies so in this case we are saying that we will be using the same process but we will try to increase the efficiency so that less amount of raw materials are required or sustainable designing such as eco design which is an approach to designing products with special consideration for the environmental impacts of the product during its whole life cycle or life cycle assessment as we have seen if we did a proper life cycle assessment then we will come to the conclusion that plastics are very expensive so life cycle assessment is also a component of clean technologies or increasing the energy efficiency such as industry specific energy efficient production processes automations control technologies efficient engines recovery of heat that would otherwise have been lost to the environment or making use of more efficient appliances electric appliances information and communication technology appliances or illumination if you are shifting from a standard incandescent bulb to say an led bulb it is an efficient appliance this is a clean technology or energy efficient buildings so if you look at the technical part or the equipments or or build a building shell which means insulation and windows so that you are able to reduce the amount of heating and cooling that is required in the building that is a clean technology so what we are seeing is that especially after the earth summit and especially after agenda 21 a number of governments have been promoting sustainable technologies or clean technologies in a number of different sectors so sustainable development is not very difficult but it does involve a trade off it does involve a cost and if the society is ready it is easy to do so that's all for today thank you for your attention jai hind